Thanks for coming back to the channel. My name is Maya and today we are outside in my backyard. So today we are going to talk about how to plan your backyard garden to get the most out of it. I live in a duplex, we rent we are surrounded by neighbors but last year we've got so much produce it's ridiculous and we weren't even utilizing the space as well as we could have so today i'm just going to take you along what i do to plan out a space we're going to go from seeing the space observing it to all the way at the end we're going to ride out and you're going to be able to know how to draw up your space okay Okay, if you are new to gardening, I just wrote an ebook. It's the beginner's guide to gardening. Talks about raised beds, talks about nutrients, soil, and I've got 30 plants and literally when you need to start them, when you, if they're frost hardy, if they're not frost hardy, that is like literally a resource that I would have loved when I was first gardening. You can check that out in the link below. But now let's figure out how and what we are doing to the yard this year. The main things that we have for growing are our raised beds. And we also have one, which is a hybrid in-ground garden, which means we basically just put edges here, but most of the dirt there is foreign ground. And the reason why I did this is because I wanted to learn whenever we move to our new home, how to work with the soil that was already there. So that has been really good. It's been really nice trying to rework this soil, um, fertilizing, making sure that I do a cut and drop has been a big difference in this in-ground portion. So off the rip, if you don't have garden beds and you're just now trying to learn how to garden, the biggest thing that I hear during my garden consultations is I don't think it's getting enough sun. And they already know that before they even tell me. So make sure you watch, you track the sun. You wanna put it in the best place possible. Number two. One thing that you want to maximize, especially in a space that is so small, is your vertical gardening, which is trellising. So last year, we actually used this trellis for our pole beans. We have a trellis for our cucumbers. But this year, one thing that we are doing is we are trellising our tomatoes. So we love to grow indeterminate tomatoes. If you didn't know, there are two variety. Determinate means, it sounds like its name, and it's determined. So it's going to usually be that short and stocky one. And indeterminate is one that you're going to keep getting fruit from till the very end of the season when frost comes. And for me, I personally like those. But for that, the little normal tomato cages are just not gonna work. They're gonna get to a point and you're gonna have to figure out how to trellis them up. So one thing that we are doing this year is making sure that we use one of these and we're gonna trellis them all the way up. Now, when you think about trellising, you also wanna think about the vining things. Another thing that people trellis a lot is loofah. They trellis cucumber, they trellis butternut squash, which is one thing that I'm still on the fence if I'm gonna do or not. I've got a bush variety and I've got a little butternut variety that I think might be perfect just to try out on a trellising method. Another thing that I love to trellis in the beginning of the season are peas. Now, if you have not seen it, it's called a pea wall. And one thing that I made, it actually was right here last year. It was at the very top of this bed. Use three T-posts and fishing line. And I kid you not, that sucker stayed up. It was the most beautiful pea wall. I was so sad when we had to cut it down. Um, but that is one thing that is so amazing um, is that you can have those peas and they grow right up, taking almost no room. Another thing, as I look at my garden, that you have to keep in consideration, maybe if this is not your first time, maybe it's your second or third time having a garden, is crop rotation. Now, crop rotation is important because certain things need different nutrients. So if you keep corn in one position, for too long, the corn is gonna suck there. As a Nebraskan, one thing that you will see a lot is farmers will have soybean crops and they will have corn crops. And every single year, those crops will get flip-flopped because it's helping enriching the soil. So that's the kind of mindset that you wanna have in your garden. Now for that, that might take a little bit of research, but once you kind of get that down, you'll kind of see how you're going to move and plan your garden. What crop rotation is going to do is make sure that you are naturally building your soil to have everything that it needs. Now we're also going to add amendments, but being able, 
but being able to do that and kind of work with how nature's rhythm is is one of those important things that you want to do next we're going to talk about companion planting so one thing that i will always keep in mind while doing my garden is what is going to go together now for me when i think about my corn bed i think about the three sisters which is the corn the squash and the green beans that are climbing up the corn now i am going to do a variation of the three sisters right here corn green beans and then i'm actually going to do container my squashes i'm in uh, obviously <laughs> uh, a suburb i am in a duplex so that is going to be one way that i'm going to help kind of give it enough room to go up into the corn bed now what the three sisters method does that trailing squash is going to act as a weed barrier and a cover giving to the corn which is going to hold the moisture in a little bit more for the corn but also for the green beans they're going to love climbing up the corn you can also put sunflowers they call that the fourth sister um but three sisters is one thing that i'm very excited to try if you saw my seed haul you see i have a lot of fun varieties of pumpkins and squashes so i'm going to utilize that to like the fullest the major thing that i think about when i am going to plan out my layout is pet is a pest deterrent. This really goes hand in hand with companion planting and that is um, companion planting for the purpose of pest and also to enhance maybe the flavor of certain vegetables. So for me, I will always plant my carrots and my onions together because the onions give off a, a scent that is gonna deter the white fly that wreaks havoc on a carrot. So when you do different varieties of that, you've got basil and tomato, they say that borage helps to deter tomato hornworms and if you've ever had a tomato hornworm you know that those guys suck okay i won't touch them that's like the grossest kind of pest to me i can do aphids i can do whatever worms caterpillars but don't give me that one just not that one I also want to take into the consideration the soil that you have in here so i want to give you two different um, variations that I have of soil. I have a couple that I have been working for maybe four to five years, but I've got one that was very, very new last year. Now with doing a lot of work to it, which has really been adding my fertilizer, which I need to do very soon, I have seen an enhancement of the soil. So you see right here, all of this soil came from the same batch. Um, however, you're seeing like little cracks in this soil because I have not touched anything with fertilizer just because I am I'm literally trying this out for an experiment now over here I have placed surf I have placed um, my fertilizer which is I'll link it down below but I have seen such a difference here in Nebraska we've got very clay like soil but I don't know what was in that fertilizer but it really at the end of the season was like helping it break down now I will show you over here and you can already tell on the screen it is way darker I feel like this one holds more moisture in this one's gotten loved it's gotten taken care of um, this is been with us for a very long time so whenever we move I'm like trying to find a way to take the soil with us because I've worked a really long time for this so now that we have kind of walked around and shown what we're looking for now is the time for like what I think is the fun part which is the drawing out and figuring out exactly what you're gonna do one thing you're gonna want to do is make sure before you draw anything to take a measurement or approximately the size of the raid beds that you are going to put in that is gonna help you know how many plants you need um, and kind of plan accordingly to everything that you want to grow this year. Back downstairs and I have drawn out different varieties of my actual garden bits. I'm going to lay out my personal layout is I'm going to put different dots for how many are going in to go to a square foot. I have a list of all of this in my ebook for a quick reference for you for about oh goodness 40 I would say plants and about how many you can fit into a square foot so this one is the three sisters and this one is going to be my potato and green bean bed now how square foot gardening works it is 12 inches by 12 inches so a perfect square so uh, that basically we're gonna have eight squares on this way and four squares on this way to make up our lovely square foot bed. So let's start with the three sisters. I'm gonna start with the first sister, which is going in containers. 
which is here's my different pumpkins and squash varieties. And these are going to line out this way into the bed. But they recommend putting four corn in every square foot, and I like to do it in a diamond shape. Always want to make sure to put your corn in a grid because corn is wind pollinated. All right, let's move on to the next sister, which is our pole beans. Now, you want to make sure that your pole beans are located very close, right next to the corn, just because we want to make sure that it is able to climb up. So let's fill in our pole beans. So there are my pole beans. Now, if you'll see right here, there is a space that is very empty. And what I'm going to do, because a lot of these need to be started um, later on in the season because they are summer crops. Um, also, the squashes are gonna go away later. So I'm going to put radishes, and I'll probably end up putting spinach on here, but for the purpose of this, I'm just gonna fill in our radishes. Just from this 8x4 bed in three containers, we've got approximately, okay, these are all approximates, 76 pieces of, uh, 76 corn, 25 pole beans, 128 radishes, and three squash plants. So it is really cool how much you can get out of such a small space. Now we're gonna move on to this one. This is our potato and bean bed, which also has some companion plants. So first, let's start with our potatoes. And because potatoes and green beans are good in the same bed together, because the green beans are a nitrogen fixer, we are going to put those alongside the outside of these beds. In the corner right here, we're gonna put a borage plant because that is going to help the overall bed with the potatoes. And down here, we are going to put two little calendulas. So what we get out of this 8x4 bed is 56 individual bush bean plants, 32 potato plants, one borage, and one calendula plant. So we are working with two 4x6 beds. These are our cedar raised beds that we made last year. I'm going to start with the one with the tomatoes. Um, we're going to put the tomatoes right here and the trellis for reference is right there. Some people say to put tomatoes in two square feet. However, I'm trellising them, so I do not mind putting them in one square foot. And also, I do a lot of upkeep on my tomatoes to make sure that we have one main stem so it doesn't get too bushy. The crop that goes very well with tomatoes is basil. I've also seen some people um, do basil microgreens down below. Um, basil really does very good. Basil microgreens are great and they just continued to harvest down below. What that did was like suppress the weeds, make it, made it, what it did is suppress the weeds, made it moist. Um, you don't have to do that, but you can plant basil closer than you think. And if you're starting seeds, plant a lot of basil, okay? That is going to protect your plants. It's going to tear it because of the scent. Another thing that is going to go in the garden that is going to help um, with tomato hornworms is borage. We're going to put one right there in that square. Now in the middle of this bed, I'm actually going to plant carrots. Now, this is not the only place I'm planting carrots, um, but it is one of the places. So you can put 16 carrots in one square foot. So that is a lot of bang for your buck when it comes to me. On the outside of those, I am actually going to put sage. The one that we will be doing is cilantro and parsley. Um, I'm going to make these the same color, but they're basically just going to go all in this square over here. And on the very bottom over here, to help with the carrot fly, we have some chives. Some more flowers of a calendula for nasturtium. One thing I am on the fence about, but I'm going to stick it on here anyway, is a sunflower. 
and I'm gonna give it a big space um, and if need be I can lean it against that trellis. Only what we can fit into this 4x6 is 3 tomato, 1 sunflower, 10 basil, 8 cilantro, 8 parsley, 112 carrots, yeah guys 112, uh, 1 borage plant, 1 calendula plant, and 4 nasturtium plants. And the very last one is going to be my cabbage bed. So we'll start in the middle with one cabbage per square foot. And I'm just going to zigzag these so that they have space to grow, but then we can also put things on the inside of it. Next, we're going to put spinach. And I'm gonna put four spinach in each one. And let me break this up so it looks like spinach and not just like more cabbage. What I'm going to do to surround this whole bed and a lot of my other beds is I'm going to line them with onions and shallots. That is why I grew so many so I have different varieties for different spaces. So the first one is my either Alisa Craig or my yellow spinach. Something that is going to do a lot more bulbing on the outside and for square foot gardening it is recommended nine onions per square foot so i'm just kind of sticking three around the outside this one is shallots they are small enough so they're not going to take up so much room so they can really creep on the outside and i can really kind of maximize that space and on the very inside i'm going to plant some beets now this is the only not the only place that I will plant beets, but I feel like beets are really great um, next to cabbages because they kind of shade it a little bit to give you a little extra time for them to keep heading up and grow bigger. Hope you found this helpful. This is just the way that I do it. I know so many people do it other ways, but it really helps me get down about how many I need to start or how many I need to buy. Um, or if you're going to a certain goal like I am and you just like want to grow everything for the year, it's really nice to kind of see and move things around and know approximately what you can potentially get from your backyard. As always, friends, you are awesome. You are wonderful. And let's keep growing together. Bye. Thank you.